As you know, I'm doing a series called Drop Stress Game Focus. That's because I am doing a series for a couple of speaking clients coming up. I've got one who has me doing an uh, entire half day uh, on the complaint free uh, content but, uh, idea. The other is going to be several hours on drop stress and gain focus, which is awesome for me because it's inspired me to really work on dropping stress and gaining focus. So what I'm doing is sharing with you all some of the tips and techniques that I have learned. There's so many to help us drop stress. That is to release that cortisol endorphin battle that goes on within our bodies and to begin to live a more neutral, balanced, happier, healthier by far life. So in the last episode, I shared a few ideas with you, and I wanted to ask you, how many of you chose to yawn throughout the day to help yourself relax? Did any of you practice laughter yoga? If you did, let me know. And then the other one was, we oh, blowing out birthday candles. So let me know if you practiced any of those, such as blowing out birthday candles, uh, yawning, etc., Tell me how that was for you. Great. I see some of you answering the question. So tell me not only what you did, but how was it for you, Willow? (laughs) This we're going to talk about today is called Describing Life. And interestingly enough, I first saw this in an episode or several episodes of Better Call Saul when his brother is uh, right before his brother dies. Spoiler alert but then again, it's been around for years. But right before Chuck, Saul's brother, Jimmy's brother, dies, he is seeing a therapist whom he has resisted seeing for many, many years. And one of the techniques the therapist has him do is she has him describe what he is looking at. Whenever he feels anxious or whenever he feels upset, she has him describe whatever he is looking at. And in that, it grounds him. We are so not present to the present, it's staggering. We can multitask in our minds to a point where we just water down reality. For a long time, I practiced transcendental meditation, and then I got out of it for a few years, and now I'm back into it. I've done it twice daily for almost a week. Little, yeah, almost a week. And I've noticed that it's even possible to repeat my mantra over and over while thinking about something else, while thinking about a letter I need to type or a phone call I need to make. And yet my mantra is still running there, but it's in the background. And the idea is for the mantra to be the only thing that you focus on. Nothing else exists. It's a practice of like Zazen or sitting Zen. It's just being with one and only one thing as opposed to being one with everything. As I mentioned before, meditation is either bi- is binary. It's either everything or one thing, or everything or no thing. Anyway, I'm getting a little far off field here. The point I'm wanting to make is that she has him describe things that are going on in his life rather than just feel the emotions, but describe exactly what she was, what he is living. For example, I'll do it right now. I did it just the other day, but I'm going to do it again at a bit more deeper level. All right. So what I am looking at, I see bright light to my left, bright light to white light to my right. Uh, I see a Logitech HD 1080p camera right in front of me. I see a camera, excuse me, rather, I see a um, post-it note, yellow post-it note, white folding doors, blue walls, white ceiling, black desk, black microphone, beige book. It's important to put in the color 
because that adds descriptions. That's how we take things in visually. Blue eyeglass wipe, purple pen, multicolored Amazon device. Do you see what I mean? To do that, you kind of have to shut everything off. Now, the interesting thing was you probably noticed a little glitch in my voice as I was doing that. I got a message, somebody I was supposed to meet yesterday and had to reschedule for today just sent me a message saying they're going to need to reschedule again. And my mind immediately went to that. Now, that's not even really in the present. That's about the future because the rescheduling is going to have to take place in the future and it's going to occur in the future. So that immediately drew me out of my mindfulness. One of the most important things you can do, and I can't believe I haven't mentioned this yet, is Go into your phone and turn off your notifications. Turn them off. You don't need to know every time your aunt posts something in Facebook. Go into Facebook three times a day and check it out. But don't let your phone constantly alert you. Don't be on alert because that takes you from being where you are. It. I've only lived here in Key Largo now for two years and something I have noticed, though, is the increasing ubiquity of smartphones. Even just in the last couple of years, I know we've had them for years. I just see people saving all of their money for the year to come down here for a week. And they sit and stare at their phones while they're at the pool, while they're supposedly watching the sunset et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We don't experience things. We put things into the future and into the past. So today I wanted to put this just into its own category because I consider it to be so important. It is a great method for distress tolerance. Whenever you start to feel emotions that are uncomfortable or distressful, one of the best things you can do is to put this into practice, and that is to simply describe your surroundings. You can't describe your surroundings and be in the future. You can't describe your surroundings and feel bad about the past. You can't describe your surroundings and be critical of yourself. These are neutral things. That's another thing. You're stating facts. You're just being neutral about what is. So take a moment where you are and just look around. And we're going to do this, but I want you to do it internally. I'm going to add a few more things. Brown box. That it, This is what I would say I've been saying in my mind. Green and yellow bag, purple sign, black pole, green cord, pink post-it note, salmon post-it note, black screen. The challenge with all of these is they are so easy that we're like, oh, I can do that anytime. So we don't. Isn't that ironic? It's like they've discovered that people who buy home exercise equipment rarely use it because now they feel like, well, I've got it. I can use it anytime. And they don't. One of the great challenges in life is not knowing what to do. It's getting ourselves to do what we know. So I want you to try this today. And here's another thing, all right? You want to take it to the next level. And I know there's a number of you, and I could even name you, who would like to take this to the next level. And that is try not doing something until you describe it to yourself. Here's what I mean. Let's say I'm going to walk Teddy, take Teddy out. I take him out at least three times a day. So I let me describe it to you, right? So I walk to the front door. I reach to the right of the front door. I grab Teddy's leash. I call Teddy. I get Teddy to sit. I hook the leash to his neck. I open the front door. I then open the hurricane door. I close the doors. I then walk out 
a few feet into the corridor, turn left, and then I zigzag to the elevator, press the down button, and wait. While I wait, I often check my phone. I then get on the elevator, go down to the first floor. All right, so now I literally just describe pretty much turn by turn what I do to take my dog out. Now imagine that I can't do any of that until I tell myself to do it. In other words, I say, it's like the game Mother May I when you were a kid. Do you remember that, Mother May I? My brothers and I used to play that. But instead you say, Will, walk to the front door. Will, turn to the right. Reach down, grab the leash. Call Teddy. Get Teddy to sit. Do you see the difference? I am telling myself to do it in advance, in advance rather. So in the one case, I'm describing what I'm doing and what is happening. And in the other case, I am actually driving myself as if I'm an automaton by my internal dialogue. That really, really, really grounds you in being present really grounds you in being present. I hear a dog and I always think that's Teddy, but it's not. I'm glad to know that it's not. There's a lot of dogs here. So I want to invite you to try this today. This is my challenge to you. Three times today, three times today, I want you to look around the room and you can do this at a stoplight, okay? Be mindful at stoplights. That's one of the things I try and do. Be mindful at stoplights. Look around and just say, green leaves, red light, yellow case, black wire, blacktop road, white lines, blue Chevrolet pickup. See what I mean? I want you to do this three times a day. Because tomorrow I'm going to ask you, I see a number of you have told me what you did yesterday, whether or not you yawned, you laughed, etc. So now we're going to do our check-in. That's what we decided to do. We're going to stop. We're going to start getting to content earlier and check-in later. So now's a chance for all of you to share this uh, jumpstart by clicking share and typing shared in the comment section. That's how we know you've done that. And I want you, I also want to just throw out, be thinking about some things you want to accomplish next year, just a handful of things. If to eat, just the thought of it, it's not about a setting um, New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions are decisions that are made in the heat of the moment and rarely acted upon. Think of yourself a year later and what it is you would have liked to have achieved, attained, become. Don't make them huge. Just make them important. All right. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high.